Hey all and welcome to 9.1 uh, which is right triangle trigonometry. So all of chapter 9 is based on or is about trigonometry and trigonometry means the study of triangles uh, which you might have guessed from the prefix there on that word. Um, trigonometry is going to be a big deal. You will study it again in pre-calculus and then there are whole units of calculus and on that have to deal with trigonometry. So Engineers use trigonometry a ton. My dad is a civil engineer and he uses it a lot, I know. Um, so here you go. Welcome to your first lesson on trigonometry. You might have done some of this in geometry, depending. So if you have done this and it looks familiar, then great, because that mean, just means you have a head start. So there are six trigonometric ratios. Um, and just to help make it a little less to look at, um, and the ratios are called sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Uh, these are operations, and so they require an argument, similar to logarithms, right? You can't just say log, that doesn't mean anything, that's not a noun, it's an operation, and so it needs something after it, the log of what, right? Um, and this is the same thing, you can't just say like sine equals one half because that doesn't even make sense. Um, it has to be the sign of something and it's the sign of an angle. So in this case, with this picture I grabbed, they call it X, but, but the textbook um, uses theta. We can use either one, it doesn't really matter. So that's a capital Greek letter theta. And the angle does not have to be in this position, but to find the opposite side, the opposite side is the side that the angle is opening up onto. The adjacent side is the leg that comprises one of the rays that makes up the angle. And the hypotenuse is obviously the one across from the 90 degree angle. Um, and so that's how we would label them. And here are what the ratios mean. So the sine of the angle is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. And so you can write so, um, to help you remember that, that sine is the ratio of the opposite to hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is the adjacent to the hypotenuse. So you can write C for cosine and then A over H for the adjacent to the hypotenuse. Um, ka, right, it sounds like. And then for tangent, the tangent is the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent, so that would be TOA. So we abbreviate this a lot and we say, oh yeah, we're doing SOCA-TOA triangles and SOCA-TOA trigonometry. That's what that means. Um, those are the most three commonly used trigonometric functions. The other three, though, are the reciprocals of those three. So cosecant, and that's why I have them written in this order, cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function and secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function, and tangent and cotangent are also reciprocals of each other. Uh, so you would probably do well to um, write those down and, and write them down in that configuration also. Uh, the textbook may change, but I don't think they do, and I would certainly never write them out of this order. So sine, cosine, tangent, and then cosecant, secant, cotangent, so that the reciprocal function is next to uh, the, the, main, the main three functions. Um, and so let's do a little bit of practice. Uh, let's evaluate all six trigonometric functions for the following triangle. So if I want to know sine theta, I don't know what the angle theta is, like what it measures, but I know that they're placing theta, right? The example places theta right here. So if I want sine of theta, then I want the opposite, which would be the side that it's opening up onto, which would be the four. And if that's the right angle, then seven is the hypotenuse. And so the sine of theta would be four over seven, uh, which is great. And then that also tells us that the cosecant of theta is seven fourths because those are reciprocals of each other. But now that I try to find cosine theta, uh, I see that cosine theta needs the adjacent side and I don't have the adjacent side. So I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to help me find the adjacent side. So I'll say, uh, let's, we can call this A. A squared plus four squared equals seven squared. 
So a squared plus 16 equals 49 and subtract 16 from 49 and you get 33. So that means a has to be the square root of 33. So now see if you can simplify it, which you can't since 33 is just three times 11. And now I can figure out the other ratio. So the cosine of theta would be root 33 divided by seven because I'll have the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent, which is the opposite over the adjacent, would be four divided by root 33. And then that's not okay uh, because it's not rationalized. And so it's ugly. We want to avoid irrational numbers on the bottom. So I'm gonna multiply by root 33 over root 33 to rationalize. And so I get that the tangent is four times the square root of 33 over 33. And I know that looks more complicated than what we had at first, but we prefer that because it's rationalized. Uh, for the secant and cotangent, then I'm just gonna take reciprocals of the ones that I have. So for the cosine being root 33 over seven, that means the secant would be seven over root 33. And if I rationalize that the same way that I just did with the last one, I get that that's seven times the square root of 33 over 33. For the cotangent, I don't actually want to take my end answer for tangent and flip it because then I'm going to have to re-rationalize. So it's actually a lot easier if we take the original unrationalized version and flip that and then you would just get root 33 over four for the cotangent. And those would be the six trigonometric functions um, evaluated at that angle theta. Uh, another way that we can use um, trig, so far in that last example, we found them, but I guess we weren't using them to do anything. Uh, but now here's, one, here's a, an example that we can actually find the missing side length by using our calculator with, um, with the trig functions. So I need to examine the triangle and I need to see what two pieces of the triangle I have out of um, opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse. Which two of the three do I have? And that way I can pick which trig function I want to use. So I have, this would be the adjacent side is what I'm looking for. And then I have the hypotenuse. So the trig function that uses adjacent and hypotenuse would be, that's right, you guessed it, cosine. So we'll say cosine of 40 degrees would equal the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 62. Um, now we also could have used the secant function because the secant function uh, also uses the hypotenuse and the adjacent. But if you live on your calculator, your calculator has sine, cosine, tangent, and inverse sine, inverse, cosine, inverse, tangent. And it does not have the other three as buttons in the calculator. Not that we can't compute them, but that would be more work. So you would always want to stick to that left column of sine, cosine, or tangent uh, when you're finding missing side lengths or solving triangles. So then if I want to solve for x, I can just multiply both sides by 62, and I get x equals 62 times the cosine of 40 degrees. Um, to evaluate that and get a decimal approximation, then you wouldn't want to check your mode and make sure that you're in degree mode. So on your calculator, if you hit the mode button, which is the second one up here, you'll see that you have all these different choices. And for me, it's the third one down. It says radian or degree. The default every time you clear your calculator is that your calculator is on radian mode. And that's just how the angle is measured. We're gonna talk more about that in 9.2. But we want to be in degrees because our triangle is in degrees. So you can see that mine, I don't know if you can see there. There you go, no, there. Um, you can see that I've already changed mine over to degrees, but make sure that you have degree highlighted in your calculator. And then you can just type 62 times the cosine. So find the button that says COS, right? Uh, 62 times the cosine of 40 degrees. And you should get that that is approximately 47.495. So we found the missing side length. 
And last but not least for the section, uh, we can not only find one missing side length, but we can actually solve the triangle. So solving the triangle means that we're gonna find all the angles and all of the sides. And we can do this depending um, on the problem. Sometimes the problem will give us an angle and a side, or sometimes the problem will give us two sides. And of course, the right angle is always in there, that one of the angles is a right angle. So in this case, uh, I have the angle of 17 degrees, and I have this side. Now, which side would this be? Is this the opposite or the adjacent or the hypotenuse? It's the opposite. So I would pick one that I would like to solve for um, first, because I don't know either one. And you can let that be X if you want, or you can let that be A, or just pick a letter, it doesn't matter. And so now I'm going to look at the trigonometric function that I have that would use those two. So if 10 meters is the opposite, and A is the adjacent, then the trig function that uses opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I would say the tangent of 17 degrees is the opposite, which is 10, over the adjacent, which is A. And to solve for A in this case, because A is on the denominator, I'm gonna use the flip-flop method, so I'm just gonna flip these two around, and, and that would give me that A is going to equal 10 divided by the tangent of 17. Uh, and since I'm already on degree mode, I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. 10 divided by the tangent of 17. And I get that A is approximately 32.709. Uh, so I can write that here, 32.709. And now um, I can find the hypotenuse by using trigono uh, trigonometric functions or I can just do the Pythagorean theorem at this part. In order to not have rounding error, uh, I'm gonna leave the full number in my calculator, which was actually 32.70852618 when I do the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to square that, and then I'm going to add 100 to that, and I'll take the square root of that quantity to get that the hypotenuse by the Pythagorean theorem would be approximately 34.20. Three. So I'm setting up 32.7085 dot dot dot, right? All those decimals squared plus 10 squared equals c squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And that's how I'm getting the 34.203 for the hypotenuse. Uh, and then I still have one angle that I have not found yet. And so we're going to use the fact from geometry that there's 180 degrees in every triangle but this is 90, so the other two have to add up to 90 as well. So 17 plus what would equal 90? And if I subtract 17 from 90, then I get 73 degrees left for that other angle. So now I found all three sides and all three angles, um, and that counts as solving the triangle. Now looking at your homework, uh, we've covered everything on 9.1 homework except for uh, this type of question, so I want to just set this up for you to make sure you understand that if I give you the, that the cosecant of theta, for instance, is five-thirds, and I ask you for the cosine of theta, we want to just do this by drawing a picture. I'm sure you could probably figure it out yourself anyways, um, but just to give you a heads up, especially since we're remote learning. Uh, and so I would draw a right triangle, and I would assign one of the angles to be theta. It doesn't really matter which one as long as it's not the right angle. And then cosecant, I would think about the ratio that cosecant represents, and that would be the hypotenuse over the opposite would be five over three. So I'll go ahead and put five for the hypotenuse, and I'll go ahead and put three for the opposite. And then when I have the picture, it's pretty easy to tell what cosine theta is, because cosine theta now is the ratio that I would want is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so I can find the adjacent side by doing the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, in this case, it's a Pythagorean triple. So I know that that's four. And so cosine theta would be four over five because that would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So there you go. You are all set to do your 9.1 homework. Have fun. Enjoy your beginning of trigono trigonometry.